Hello once again. So in this video, I was going to cover some more uh, browser automation. I've done a few videos with doing Chrome and Auto Hotkeys, uh, but in this one, I'm going to focus on Internet Explorer. Just because with Internet Explorer, Auto Hotkeys is designed so well to work with it using what's called comms to communicate with it. Unfortunately, Internet Explorer is the only browser really that uses comms. And as of the time of recording this video, uh, Internet Explorer has been discontinued, so this video might become obsolete in the future, who knows, but I know a lot of like companies and stuff are going to really continue to use Internet Explorer for at least the next few years, just because a lot of their sites and you know applications are designed really for Internet Explorer, and they just they haven't really made that move to Chrome or you know whatever else that they might want to use. Uh, plus with this way, in the Chrome videos, I use uh, an extension to listen for auto hotkeys to send some JavaScript commands. So this one's a little bit easier to do if you can use Internet Explorer, just because there's no extension and it directly communicates with your uh, browser site. Let's take a look at that code. So the first thing we got here is set title match mode. Uh, it's a two. I've talked about that in a lot of videos, so no really need to explain that. It's just something helpful to have in a lot of code uh, scripts. So the first function we got here is called IE get function. And then we also have down here the WB get function. All that means is Internet Explorer get and web browser get. This code was designed by um, a guy named, uh, I guess that's pronounced Jeff Jeffro. And you can find this code like all over the place. It's in tons of people's scripts that are using Internet Explorer to communicate with auto hotkeys. <clears throat> I'm not really going to go over this code because it's some pretty advanced stuff. And uh, I'm still working on doing a lot of like the intro kind of stuff and then moving up a little bit more into mid advancement. So this would probably be, you know, a little bit down the line where I kind of break stuff like this down. But just, you know, I'll put this in the description below, copy it to your, um, you know, script, you don't really need to understand anything in here because none of this stuff is going to need to be manipulated by you at all. It's code that's designed just to work with Internet Explorer. You're not going to need to make any variable changes or anything in this code up here. Just make sure uh, you put it in your script. It doesn't actually matter where it goes just because later on you can call from it from anywhere. This could be at the end of your script or the beginning of your script. It doesn't really matter. I just have it at the beginning, because that's the first thing I put in there. So here we go. Here's where we're going to really break stuff down. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to push F1. I'm then going to have it look for if window exists, Google. Uh, you don't have to do a window exist. I'm doing it here just to kind of show you how this code works. So that way I can do kind of two things at once. You don't have to do it this way. Um, but basically it's saying if I'm on the Google website, I want to go ahead and run this code. And what it's going to do, I got a variable here, which equals auto hotkeys, which we'll use here in a little bit. And then here, here's where I'm uh, calling upon that function, wb uh, get. <clears throat> We're then going to hit that uh, navigate. So navigate just means go to this website that I have here in parentheses and brackets. So I'm going to make it go to the auto hotkey uh, boards. From there, I'm just going to put a sleep uh, five seconds or 500 or 5,000 milliseconds uh, just to give the chance uh, for the page to load. Honestly, it doesn't probably need to be five seconds, but I want to put that little bit of a lag there so you guys can see a little bit better what's going on. So I made it, you know, a full five seconds. Next, we got, um, basically, here's what the comms are going to be. And this is what's communicating with Internet Explorer. So once I'm on that site, um, if I really wanted to, I could add another if here, window exists, auto hotkeys website here. I could do that, too, just to help prevent any uh, problems if there was, like, a really bad lag and that sleep just wasn't good enough. A lot of different things you can do there. Really customize it to what you want. We got the first line here, WB, 
web browser document. That's basically saying look at you know the website parent window, which is the the main window that you're looking at. <clears throat> dot document dot all, and I'm looking for keywords, and then I want to click on that field. That way, it's like focused right there. There is a focus command you could use too, but I just like using the click one. So all that's doing is uh, mimicking a click on that uh, box. So let's go ahead and look at that website and see how we get this keywords right here and why I'm using that. So I'm already on the auto hotkey website and that's just this right here, this search bar. There's a few ways you can get that information. If you um, downloaded auto hotkeys, it actually comes with uh, a program called Window Spy which is this right here. This will tell you the information you need just by hovering over all that. It tells you a whole bunch of information. But I honestly prefer something that's called IWB2. And these are all free downloads uh, written in AutoHockey that you can grab. I just like this one because honestly I think it looks a little bit cleaner. And it only gives me the information I truly need. What you do is you grab the little thing up here that says drag cursor, grab it, turns your mouse into a little plus sign. And that's your little target. As you see, it's highlighting different parts. Well, I'm going to hover over this. And it gets that little red line under it, lets me know where it's at. And right there is what I'm looking for, ID keywords. If you click on it, it automatically copies it to your clipboard, which is nice. The other thing sometimes you need to look at is this can change from value to inner text. And all that really is is saying that right here, I put value. If this had said inner text, I would just change this to say inner text instead. So I already got that keywords copied in there in a few spots actually. The first line means it's going to click on that search. It's then going to do all the same stuff there but I'm adding a get element by ID, keywords. I want to change the value to that variable I had talked about up here, auto hockey. So that's just going to fill in the search bar for me. Now, some websites you have, they have what's called events, meaning that if there is a field box and it's required to have text in it in order to you know, complete a form or something, this is just going to make that event disappear so that I can then go submit it. AutoHockey's website doesn't have that. So technically I don't need this, uh, these last three lines here, the input, input, and then the, uh, the last one where it just says like dispatch event at the end. But I just have them on there so you guys can see that because a lot of websites you might be required to have these three lines. Um, you'll know if basically if you go to that website and there's no data in here and I try pushing search, It'd be like, you know, hey, you got to fill something out here or I can't search. Then you might need those if it's causing problems. Even if there's text in there, it might not recognize uh, that auto hotkeys automatically inserted it for you. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and try this out. Let me minimize that. I'm going to close that auto hotkey website and I'm going to start on Google because Obviously, for some reason, I, I'm on Google, but I decide, no, I actually just want to go straight to the form instead and search there. So I'm going to push F1. So it automatically ran. It's going to wait five seconds. And there it went. It just automatically filled out the auto hockey uh, info right there. And I can just go ahead and search. You, um, another way, too, just in case you don't want to download these programs... Uh, for whatever reason, uh, you can manually actually do that in Internet Explorer to find the ID by right-clicking, inspect element, give it a second to load, and it's going to highlight that element for you, and you just look for where it says ID, and there's that word keywords again. That's a way to get it too, without using those programs if you don't want to use them. There's, you know, a lot of different ways to get that information, so it doesn't really matter. You know, to each his own. Whatever. <laughs> now, one other thing I do want to point out is sometimes websites can have frames inside of them. Uh, this website doesn't, so I was able to just kind of do this. 
But looking at that exact same code over here, the only difference you're going to see here after parent window to document is I added frames and frame one. So some websites, they can have frame one, frame two, whatever. You can grab that information on here. When you go to, you know, highlight an element, it's going to tell you right here, right here where it says frame number. So you'll know if, the, so when I was on that website, it was blank. So I don't need that uh, chunk of code there. But if it said, you know, frame two, I just add frames, parentheses, frame one, or frame two. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it um, for that. Uh, another thing you might have to do is here I said uh, click. Sometimes uh, you do have to add this before the click where it's just uh, brackets with a zero in it. Um, that you really just got to play with. If one way doesn't work, try the other way and it should work for you. And you should be good to go. So here I really just kind of showed you like how to fill out just a simple text box on a website and also how to navigate to a website. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, this click, I could have made it auto search for me. I would just grab that uh, search with the little magnifying glass, see if it has an ID and just have it after I do this search. I would just down here add another click like so. And I don't know, let's say the ID was like, you know, search button. That would then automatically do the search for me. So this kind of stuff, there's a lot of playing around with it, uh, especially when it comes to the frames. Uh, it can even get pretty deep there, but hopefully the website's not too complicated and you can just go with kind of like this code I showed you. Um, I'll probably do another com episode uh, on the channel later. Not sure what with. Let me know what you guys are hoping to automate on there besides filling out text boxes. Uh, this is really good for filling out forms too. Um, I mean, you can put a whole bunch of these right here. Maybe there's like five different boxes you got to fill out on a form. You can just have it, you know, go down. Oops, wrong, wrong code there. That line is what I meant to get. You know, you can just go down, you know, be... Uh, text box one and then you know it just goes text box two and three so you can do all that kind of stuff too really depends what you're trying to do all right uh thank you guys for watching let me know what you guys want to see in another video kind of like this i definitely uh, have a lot of ideas but we'll see what you guys want please subscribe it helps me out quite a bit and like that button Get notifications also of when I upload a video because I'm doing usually about two or three videos every week uh, in various fields. So let me know. Thanks. See ya.